I recently finished a repair to this tractor that required draining the fuel tank. Now that it's running again, I've refilled the tank with fuel. But after turning the tractor back on, I noticed that the fuel gauge didn't respond properly. It took about 20 minutes to finish adjusting, and even after that time had passed, it still didn't quite read full. That tells me that there's a problem. Today we're going to go over how the fuel gauge and the fuel sensor work, and hopefully use that information to fix this problem. Let's do it. I'll take a moment to briefly demonstrate the problem. I filled the diesel tank all the way to the top. If I put just a few more ounces of fuel in there, it's going to overflow. Even so, when I turn the key to the on position, the fuel gauge doesn't quite read full, and it took about 20 minutes to finish getting to that level. So clearly there's a problem. Let's see what we can do to fix it. There are two main components required to get a proper reading of the fuel level in the fuel tank. The first is the in-tank sensor, shown here, and the second is the gauge on the instrument panel. For now, we're going to talk about the sensor. The sensor shown here is actually slightly different than the one in the tank, but the principle of operation is the same. The sensor has a float on it, and as the name implies, the float floats on top of the fuel in the tank, meaning that as you add fuel, the float goes up, and as the tractor burns fuel, it goes back down. The float is attached to an arm that connects to the body of the sensor. At the point of connection is a variable resistor, meaning that as the arm moves back and forth, the resistance of that resistor changes, and it changes in accordance with the values in this table. So when the tank is full, when the float is at the top, the resistance is low, only a few ohms. Once the tractor has burned off half the fuel in the tank, the resistance goes up to about 30 ohms. And when the tank is fully empty, the resistance goes all the way up to over 100 ohms. It's that change in resistance that is responsible for moving the fuel needle back and forth. We'll talk about how that works now. Here I have a diagram of the entire circuit that's responsible for generating a fuel reading. It begins with the battery and the main switch. The main switch is always closed when the tractor is on. Then there's a voltage regulator, which is there just to ensure that changes in battery voltage don't impact the fuel reading. Then the wire passes around a piece of bimetal, and finally it goes through the variable resistor that we talked about earlier. With the exception of the variable resistor, everything else is located outside of the fuel tank. Before I go any further, I want to briefly discuss how a bimetal works, because that will make the rest of the explanation make a lot more sense. A bimetal is just two different pieces of metal that are sandwiched together. What makes bimetals useful is that as temperature changes, different metals expand at different rates. In the top diagram here, you can see what happens when the two metals are placed on top of each other, but not firmly fixed together. As temperature changes, the top metal expands more than the bottom one, but only from left to right. There's no bending. However, if we take these same two metals and we then firmly fix them together, as temperature changes, they move together as a unit, and they bend. As you'll see in a moment, it's this bending property of bimetals that makes them useful. Now that we understand how a bimetal works, we can fully explain the fuel gauge circuit. Within the instrument panel, the bimetal is connected directly to the fuel needle, meaning that as the bimetal bends, the needle is going to move up and down. As we already know, the value of this resistor within the fuel tank is going to change in accordance with fuel level. Let's take, for example, when the tank is full. When the tank is full, this resistor is going to have a low value, meaning that a lot of current is going to flow through this circuit. That current generates heat, which causes the bimetal to deflect, and it pushes the needle to the full position. In contrast, when the tank is near empty, this resistor is going to have a high value, not much current is going to flow, there won't be much heat and much deflection, and the needle will fall back towards the empty position. So in summary, the value of this resistor controls the amount of current through this wire, that controls the amount of heat around the bimetal, which impacts the deflection and dictates the position of the fuel needle. I pulled up another wiring diagram to illustrate a few additional points. We're interested in the fuel gauge and the fuel sensor. If you look carefully, you'll see that the fuel gauge is connected to the variable resistor in the fuel sensor through a yellow wire. That's what the Y means. We're going to use that wire in a moment to determine if this resistor is functioning as it should. Now, you've also probably noticed that the fuel sensor has another resistor in it. What is it? Well, the answer is that this tractor has both a fuel gauge and a fuel warning light. The fuel warning light illuminates if the fuel level in the tank drops below a certain level. This resistor connects through a light green wire to that light on the control panel. Now, this circuit is functioning as it should, but just to be thorough, I'll briefly go over how it works. The fuel warning light works by wiring the bulb in series with a component called a thermistor, which is shown right here. 
A thermistor is just a resistor whose resistance varies with temperature. You can see that in the graph below. At ambient temperature, so at about 25 degrees Celsius, the resistance is in the hundreds of ohms. However, as the temperature increases to the hundreds of degrees Celsius, the resistance drops all the way down to about 10 ohms. Here's how that works in the fuel tank. Normally, the thermistor is going to be surrounded by fuel, and as a result, the heat that's generated by the current flowing through it is dissipated to the surroundings because the fuel is a good heat sink. However, when the fuel level drops below the thermistor, it's then surrounded only by air, which is a much better insulator, and the thermistor heats up. And as it heats up, its resistance decreases, which gives more current, creating more heat, and you get a positive feedback cycle that quickly drives the temperature up into the hundreds of degrees Celsius. As a result, the resistance drops considerably. Remember, the thermistor is in series with the bulb, so when the thermistor has low resistance, there's high current flowing through it and the bulb, and as a result, the bulb illuminates. The fuel sensor assembly is located towards the back of the fuel tank. I'm going to have to take off the hood in order to remove it. To remove the hood, I need to undo this support, which is easy, it's just held in place by a pin right here, and there's also another pin in the back that needs to be removed. Once those two things are done, the hood should come right off. The pin in the back is right underneath this plug here. And now I need to detach the hood support. The fuel sensor assembly is right here. It's held in place by five bolts and we're just about ready to remove it. But as you can see, the top of the fuel tank is incredibly dirty. I don't want to risk getting any of this dirt into the tank. I did power wash the tractor before I started working on it, but I couldn't get to the fuel tank because the hood was in the way. Now that the hood's off, I'm going to power wash the tractor again, and we'll come back to this in the morning once it dries. All right, now that everything's clean, we can remove the fuel sensor. Okay, I have the old sensor on the workbench in the multimeter and resistance mode. I've been playing around with it a bit already and I noticed a problem. Let me show you what I found. If you remember from the schematic, we need to have one probe on the body of the sensor because that's ground and the other one on the yellow wire. That'll give us the reading across the variable resistor. With the float in the empty position, it should read a bit over 100 ohms. Let's see what we get. Okay, 112 ohms and it's very stable. That's perfect. But in the full position, Notice how the reading is not stable. Let's go back to empty. Perfect. Back to full. Not so good. It just can't produce a consistent reading. It's likely that the contacts are worn in the full position, and as a result, it's not reading consistently and it's not within spec. I figured this might be the problem, so I've already bought a new one. Let's see what the new one reads. With the float in the empty position, it's reading right about 110 ohms. That's perfect. In the full position, it's reading right between 3 and 4 ohms, which is perfect. You notice that it's stable, unlike the old one. Back to empty. 
110. Back to full, 3.6. That's perfect. So this sensor is good. Let's get it on the tractor. Okay, I just ran the tractor for a bit, and after running for a few minutes, the fuel gauge is now reading completely full. So that new sensor did fix the problem. Now the fact that it's still taking a few minutes to adjust tells me that there might be a problem with the gauge itself, but that's okay. It's reading correctly. I can live with it being a little slow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you learned something, and if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe.